2021 has answered the wishes of many collectors by releasing all of the missing next gens going into the year. You know, we had Vinyl Toupee, we had Spearmint, we had Revengo, and Carbon Cyber. No one expects Apple to be released, and now while I have a different opinion, it is kind of possible that Mattel never does release JP Drive, the next gen Apple. So that just leaves the four, you know, going into this year that were not already released. And three of them are now out, just leaving Jim Reverick for Carbon Cyber, who should be coming in the next few months here. But yeah, guys, welcome back to another Disney docket presentation. Of course, today we have Nick Shift, one of the most boring generic names I think I've seen in a long time just behind maybe Bruce Miller. But yeah, this guy came out of Case H. I unboxed it just a couple days ago. I'll leave that link in the description below, along with the card session pop up in the top right hand corner if you wanna check that out. And yeah, let's just get right into it. This guy looks great. I love the artwork, makes him look kind of metallic. I feel like in the movie especially, he looked metallic, but they did not really emulate that on the diecast, which is okay. It's a very, unique shade of blue kind of cyan with some baby blue toss in there as well obviously new for 2021 metal on the desert horizon background there on the back as seen in cars three and this is the same exact car back that we had yesterday for the viewsine racing tractor which is kind of upsetting because you know he was in case g and now we're case h and we don't have updated card backs that show like nick shift or clovis Rider or anything like that I don't know. I feel like they're like a case behind almost. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe case J stuff. We'll see case H stuff on the back of the card. Who knows? But either way, Pam Wheel there. I will be reviewing her and Hot Rod Louise Nash soon. Do not worry. And same thing with Racing Red Sally. Those are the ones I've kind of missed. If you know, you're going in chronological order in terms of cases. But I'll be right back with a Nikki boy all opened up. So here we are with Nick all opened up. He looks really nice. I do feel like the blue they're using like right here, you know, his main color is way too gray though. It's like way too muddy. It just looks so much cleaner on the card back. So much crisper, sharper, shinier. This is a very dull, muddy blue. And I'm a little disappointed because I feel like coming into this release, like he had a lot of potential It's a very nice color for an action like i said in the movie he looked a little metallic too so i was hoping maybe we could get some like will rush because will rush you know he's got that very spectra flame ransberg purplish tone going to him and this guy i thought might be the same way but blue and he is muddy kind of nasty blue anyway there he is in the movie looking pretty solid he did get a couple good shots so that is nice. It's funny, pretty much all the remaining next gens actually got some good visuals, whereas some of the ones they released before got shafted. Like, I feel like Noah Gochak, like I barely ever really saw him in the movie, but these last ones, you know, got a good look. All right, so Spearmint with the Snowflake logo behind there, looking pretty good, pretty simple, obviously compared to what we used to have on Ernie Gearson here, the Cars 1 version. Headlights, kind of a mean expression. He doesn't look too happy right now. Probably shouldn't be. He's not winning. He's not even in the top three. Vents, light blue bumper. Now, the light blue parts on him are very nice. Like the roof here, it's a very nice shade of blue. But because this part, you know, the rest of him is so muddy, it's like almost gray. It's like a kind of just bluish gray is the only way to describe it. It doesn't really look like it fits. It doesn't really complement it because it's so bright and then the rest of it's so dark. I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think and how do you think they got the color, but I'm just not really feeling it. Like, look at that. Look at that. You're telling me those are the, supposed to be the same? No way. No way. Roof flaps, window bars. Windows are a part of the metal body. Let's take a look at the contingency sponsors. Piston cup, combustor, carbon cyber synergy. Ooh, these are like melded together. Just like on the tractor we reviewed a couple days ago, man. Light blue rims look very nice though with light gear on the 
wheels or the tires themselves. Dang. They really need to get better with those. I know they are capable of doing it. Like I've seen them do a good job on them in the past. 93 is the number. Arrow indicating to the picker where to lift him up at to do work or to exchange the tires rather. He's got like this dark blue stripe that includes snowflakes and then a couple leaves, which is the evolution of those two green leaves there. Pretty nice. I like how they did it. Looks kind of cool. The black and white. Now they did it right down the middle like that. Exhaust pipes indented. Gas cap also indented. Blue spoiler with nothing on it. Pretty sure that is movie accurate though, but it is rare to find a next gen that actually doesn't have anything written on his spoiler. Uh, and same kind of deal with the back here. Rare to find the next gen without anything in the dead center. Like, isn't that strange? You have 93 and then Spearmint with the yellow racing stripes for all rookies. Dang. P12A made in the 12th week of 2021 at the A factory. I had high hopes for Nick Schiff coming into this, but really he's a little bit of a letdown so far. Just thought he would be a brighter color, and yeah, I don't know. It's really the bait thing. I feel like the color, they botched it a little bit. They botched it. So here's Ernie Gearson from Cars 1. Here's Ernie Gearson from Cars 3 stock car, which is my personal favorite Spearmint racer. Which is rare, you know, usually I prefer either the classic or the next gen. Not usually the middle, you know, not usually the Cars 3 stock car. I don't know why, just they never tend to be my preference. But today he is. The expression is great. Also love how he's much brighter and he's got, you know, the white rims there. I mean, don't get me wrong, Nick Shift is nice and everything. But, you know, if he was released just as a normal next gen, like in the pack, I mean, I feel like he would be one of the most boring ones. But as I've always discussed exclusivity, you know, wanting what you can't have always makes, you know, the heart grow fonder, basically. Like, you always want more, like, the thing that you can't have. It's kind of hard to describe it until you really feel like, you know, there's, like, this girl you like at school, and then there's this girl that likes you at school. You know what? Uh, you, you tend to like the one that doesn't actually like you back. It's kind of just weird like that. But in a vacuum, like in a like experiment, like who knows what could happen. It's such a mind game. But yeah, look how detailed the backs were here. And this is not on Mattel, it's not on Pixar. And it just goes, it's so boring. Like modern is not always exciting. I love Ernie Gearson from Cars 3. I love how big and just vivacious the leaves look. You know, they look so real. I love the light blue. Love the real looking tires there. It just looks great. Man, I'm just not a big fan of Nick. I mean, this is on Pixar too. Like, they just made them so boring. Like, that font for Spearman, like, whatever, bro. Like, it's so boring. Snowflake, kind of cool. I like the leaves on him, but yeah. And then Mattel Botch is the color. I'm sorry. I'm really hating on Nick shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, nice release and everything. Glad they finally made him. But could they have done a better job? Absolutely. Pixar and Mattel could have definitely done a better job. Can't be a home run in everyone though. If they were gonna make this Spearman, like if they were going to make the next gen look like this, they should have gotten rid of him instead of like Taco Man. Like they should have gotten rid of the sponsor Spearman instead of some of the ones that are hard to mess up. Like Taco Mint, I feel Retread, those are hard to mess up because just intrinsically, they're such a great sponsor. I mean, especially Taco Man, like come on. How can you mess up? Just the ice cream and just the peppermint, all that. You just, you just can't. Anyway, we have Ernest B. Rakes here, the crew chief for Ernie in Cars 1, and Piccolo Perry, one of his pities. And then most recently, it's kind of the year of Spearman here. We got Xavier Rodal, who is Ernie's semi in Cars 3, not Cars 1. And I love how bright blue he is. So yeah, they all look pretty good together. It's a nice little team, custom toolbox here in the back and I'm sure you guys probably would want to see how he compares to my custom that I reviewed a little over a year ago by Wacko Arts. Here it is and see they did a nice job with the metallic because this is a much more metallic blue. 
I think the color is more accurate. Now, it's not 100% accurate by any means, but I think it's more accurate than Mattel's. Man, Wacko Arts did a really nice job emulating these decals. Like, that it must be difficult to try and just create that yourself. It really is a good job by them. Even almost nailed the expression. Like, look at that. Isn't that wild? The expression is almost the exact same. You got like kind of grayish eyes. Mouth is the same. The eyes are pretty much the same. How it kind of frills there in the middle. I just kind of raising it in the middle. Lack of arts really nailed that. All right, guys, here's the full Spearmint team. Let me know in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? Who's your favorite Spearmint racer? You guys know my answer to that question. I will see you soon for another video. Bye now.